Hey guys, Ryan Dossie here, and in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the big three data providers for real estate, pros, cons, and what we use each of them for. Let's dive right in. Before we dive into today's video, be sure to drop a like. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. That's the whole reason I'm on YouTube is to answer them, not just you know share content and talk to myself. So let's dive into this. So there's really three data providers. There's ListSource, there's PropStream, and there's Deal Machine. And I'm gonna go through them in that order because that's kind of just the order I've evolved in and kind of used them through. Now, one thing I wanna note, I do still use all three of these. Some I use more than others, some do the same thing, some there's some overlap, and some have just totally unique features. So I'm gonna walk you through kind of the rough interface on these, just like how do they work, what do they do, then we're gonna kind of talk pro cons and kind of who I recommend which of these providers for. So to start, we're gonna go with list source. Uh, these guys are like the OGs of real estate data. They're owned by a group called CoreLogic. They're kind of like the gold standard of real estate data. Um, now, I've used them for years. Uh, literally, like my first list I ever pulled to get my first deal came from ListSource. That being said, I don't really use them anymore. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one, you have to pay per record. So it's not like a monthly bill necessarily, but it's really expensive if you don't have a hookup. Like I've bought millions of records at this point. So my cost per record is between like three to five cents. If you just reach out to ListSource and say, hey, I want an account, they're gonna try to charge you like 20 cents a record. If you want a better deal, they're gonna try to get you on a really expensive annual contract for better pricing. Um, a lot of the data providers still sell their data because it is super solid, but it's kind of like if you're a newbie or just starting out, it doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, one caveat to that, they are the only provider that I'm personally aware of that actually has demographic data, meaning um, not just data on like the property itself, but on the individual who owns the property. So list source is still where we pull our senior data from. Um, Senior mailing lists historically have given us some of our best deals with some of our thickest margins. They just take a really long time to pan out. There's a lot of hand-holding like, oh, where do I wanna go that you have to figure out? Um, it's not a list I recommend for people to do on like their first drop. This is more of like a, you have other campaigns in the works, you're gonna sprinkle in some of these and you're cool with being patient, then that's totally fine. Now, one of kind of the limitations with list source too is you can't really get into things like liens or if the person was divorced or potentially filed for bankruptcy or if it's vacant, any of that stuff you can do with the other providers. So it's good for really specific things like seniors or if you're trying to pull a list of like private lenders, which I'll drop another video on. But outside of that, we don't really use it for much. Now I'm just gonna kind of give you guys a brief tour of how the software functions in case you do wanna use it to pull some lists. So it's just kind of this tab system that really runs from left to right. Geography, you're gonna pick like where you're pulling a list from. You can do that by city, state, zip. Um, you can even do like a map search thing. We'll get into it in a minute, but their map search is awful. So is PropStream's Deal Machines is the best. But realistically, you're gonna throw in zip codes or cities in order to kind of build like where you're looking for things. You're then gonna go over into the other tabs here. Uh, let me just throw in a state so we can run this while we're chatting. Um, you're then gonna realistically go over to property. We don't really use the mortgage tab a ton. Um, and you're gonna pick what kind of house you want how much equity you want it to have. You can get into like beds, baths, square footage, year bill, last date sold, all that kind of stuff. Um, after you have that done, if you wanted to pull a senior list, you can do things like, this is the demographic stuff I was talking about, age, education, income, interests, are they married, what languages do they speak, all of that, right? They're the only provider that you can get that through. Um, and then really after that, you've got where, You've got what you want, how much equity it has, what kind of person owns it. It's then kind of like time to buy your list. You go over here and you pick whether it's absentee owned or owner occupied, trust owned or not. By default, um, I'll include trusts and I typically do individuals, so I typically exclude corporate. 
Absentee owned means they don't live in the house. If I'm pulling an absentee list, I would do that. If I'm pulling an owner occupied list, then I would do just straight owner occupied. Um, you always wanna make sure mailing address and stuff is complete and then you'd click purchase list. On the next screen, we'll tally up like that cost per record. That's kind of roughly how list source works. All of these tools are kind of the same. You pick like location and then you can stack on other filters to shrink the list down until you kind of really get what you're looking for. The next one we're gonna to go to is PropStream. Um, I'm a huge fan of PropStream. I've been a user of theirs since probably like 2017-ish. Great for things like running comps in place you don't have MLS data. Deal Machine, you can do the same thing through. Um, and the interface is just really, really solid. It's really pretty straightforward. One of the cool things with PropStream, they're like 99 bucks a month, and that allows you to export out up to 10,000 records. If you're not awful at math, that's just one cent a record, which is substantially cheaper than, uh, well, what you'd be paying for list source. PropStream is one of those tools that we literally use almost on like a daily basis at this point for everything from researching who owns places to pulling niche lists down to like running comps and things of that nature. So I'm gonna give you guys just a brief overview of how this one works. So similar to list source, you're gonna start by entering in like the target area, the geography of where you're looking. So if we do Pensacola, Florida, you then have this filter drop down that makes it like really straightforward. So do you want them to be owner occupied or not? Um, do you care if it's vacant or not? List source didn't give you that, so you can get that through PropStream. You can get into all the same property characteristics, what property type, beds, baths, square footage, even down to like the person who owns it, how many other properties do they own? I have tons of like how to pull this list, how to pull that list training, so I'm not gonna go through a ton. But one of the cool things with PropStream, you also have things like MLS status, if you want to see if it's on market, off market, failed, expired, you can get into some ownership info. How long have they owned it? How many properties do they have? What did they buy it for? Um, you can also get into kind of some cool niche lists. Do they have any liens on the property? Have they filed for bankruptcy? Those are all lists that have gotten us deals. But the interface here is really straightforward. Um, once you have kind of your list pulled, let's say I wanted to pull this list here, you'd simply click this, click add to list, save it whatever you want to save it. You then hop over to properties, pick the list, check this to select all of them and click export. And you've now pulled out a list from PropStream. Um, similar to list source, they do kind of have this like map draw tool. Uh, similar to list source, I'm going to be honest in that it kind of sucks. Like you'll run into challenges. Like see, I'm, I'm trying to close the loop. and <laughs> it's, it's not wanting to close. Um, I honestly don't even really use theirs. PropStream is great if you're pulling out lists and you're wanting to then go do something with them. Skip trace them, cold call them, send direct mail, whatever. They do have some of that stuff built in, right? Like skip tracing, direct mail campaigns. In my experience, it's just not really something we utilize. When we're skip tracing stuff, we go through a group called Skip Genie. If I'm doing direct mail, obviously I'm using Ballpoint because I own that business. So. It's not necessarily like an all-in-one platform. A lot of them will tell you that they are, but they all kind of have their different like strengths and weaknesses. I would say the number one thing PropStream has going for it is just their interface is really, really straightforward, really easy to use. You can click on some of these things like, was the property bank owned, pre-foreclosure, was it bought by a cash buyer, do they have liens? Like they make it, I would say almost idiot proof if you're even like somewhat, um, computer savvy, right? The next one we've got here is Deal Machine. Now, a lot of you guys don't know this, but Deal Machine actually allows you to pull mailing lists. They're historically known for driving for dollars. Driving for dollars isn't something we really talk about a ton on this channel, just because it's not something I do a ton of, but Deal Machine has been a tool that we've really been utilizing lately for kind of some different niche lists. There was a phase when PropStream lost MLS data, and Deal Machine had it. So that was initially what kind of had us start utilizing Deal Machine more, but then we kind of figured out some other features that we like. Um, driving for dollars, if you're not familiar with it, it's effectively with the app, you drive streets at maps where you've driven and you take pictures of properties that are ugly. It tells you who owns them, what they owe. It really is kind of like a great way to get started, particularly if you have like a smaller budget. 
What they've found is you're faster and more likely to get deals utilizing driving for dollars because it's not a list I can just sit down at my computer and pull, right? I can pull an absentee list or a senior list from any of these providers in like 10 seconds while you guys watch. Driving for dollars is a list nobody else has. So that is kind of really one of those perks of Deal Machine. Now their base plan starts out at 59 bucks. That gets you like the driving for dollars side of things and you can save up to 10,000 records. In order to actually pull lists like what we're talking about, it's an extra 49 bucks. So that ends up costing, I think that's $107 in order to be able to do what I'm gonna show you guys how to do. So it ends up being, what is that? Like $8 more than PropStream, but there are some benefits that I wanna show you here. Um, one thing that's worth noting, if you have a list of properties that you're curious who owns them, like maybe you're getting data from county on foreclosures or evictions or something, and all you have is an address, in order to take those addresses and upload them into PropStream to then export out who owns these, you have to add their list automator tool, um, which is here under add-on services, it's right here. And that costs you a minimum of 27 bucks a month. With Deal Machine's base plan, that 59 bucks, you can take that same list, upload it, and it will tell you who owns those. So that right there is freaking huge. Early on, I used to literally go to like my county assessor site, look up addresses and have to do them like one by one. You can do the same thing in PropStream, right? If you didn't want to upload them all and you wanted to just do it one by one, copy and paste, but like realistically, I, I think your time's more valuable than that. So when it comes to Deal Machine, I'll be just kind of blunt. Um, the interface itself is a little lacking compared to PropStream. It's a little bit more like programmery, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So similar to PropStream, you're gonna start up here and you're gonna pick uh, the actual city or geographic region. You can do zip code, county, all of that. And you start there, it'll kind of adjust on the map and show you where that's at. Um, it'll also start to count up for you how many records there are over here in this potential list. You can then go through all of these different filters or create your own to start to kind of build that list. So for instance, um, I wanna add in single family. Now you can do a lot of this and an or logic where, is it, where it gets a little bit more programmery. So I can do, you know, and I want it to have equity. Um, and you can search too, which is nice with these. So equity percent, you get into this like greater than, equal to, in between, right? So I just do is between and we do 35 to 100% on all of these. And we can see, okay, it's telling me there's 36,000 places that kind of meet that criteria and you can keep adding to that. So I could hop in here and do MLS market status and I could do off market to thin it out more, right? So very similar to PropStream, the interface just requires a little bit more thought. Um, on PropStream, if I wanna pull a list of, you know, say properties that are single family and duplexes, it's just the simple like drop down on Deal Machine. It's a little bit more, um, you know, gotta come back in here do property, property type, and then pull it through there. So single family, um, you know, multifamily, et cetera. You then click confirm, and then that also adds it to that and narrows it down. So if this is a little bit more complex to use, why would I use it? Great question. Um, one, if you're really specific about what you want or maybe what you don't want. So maybe you're a developer, you're a flipper, and like, you don't wanna mail a whole zip code. You just wanna mail like part of it, right? Deal Machine has the best map select tool that I've ever seen. So you literally click in here, you can draw whatever you want, you know, whatever kind of weird shape you want, but has zero problem connecting. Like literally that easy, done. It'll pull, there's 61 properties in that area that match this random criteria I pulled together. So that right there is huge. Um, they also do have the MLS data for the ability to go and run comps. So really, really straightforward, similar to um, PropStream. Like you can see all of the data, 
who owns it, what did they buy it for, assessed, beds, baths, square footage, et cetera. You can hop in and run comps and really easily see like what else sold, similar to PropStream. So for a lot of people watching this, it's really gonna come down to one of two things kind of in this deciding factor. Between PropStream and Deal Machine, are you going to pull data out or you're really wanting to market to it? One thing that's really neat with Deal Machine, it's actually the only place you can order less than 500 pieces of ballpoint mail. The other thing that's cool, if you have like niche lists, like probates or something you want out like now, we have a two day turnaround guarantee with Ballpoint and Deal Machine. So that's the fastest way to get that kind of mail out. You can literally just send one if you want. There's no other way to do that. So realistically, if you're like totally new, you've got to decide, am I going to pull lists and figure out what to do with it? Or am I more likely to drive for dollars and send mail directly through uh, the website or the app? My recommendation, honestly, I think it comes down to your budget. If I was just starting out and I had more time than cash, I'm gonna go through Deal Machine, I'm gonna drive for dollars, I'm gonna pull some of these small niche lists, I'm gonna send my mail. If I was starting out and I had more cash than time, I'm more likely to just pull a large list and mail it, which you can do that through PropStream or Deal Machine. So at the end of the day, I think it's kind of a toss up. It really comes down to like, which interface do you like better and which one you think has better support. So at the end of the day, I personally utilize and pay for all three of these. I realize for some of you guys just starting out, that might not make sense. So I wanted to shoot this video and kind of just give you an overview of like how these tools work, what they have in common, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, and kind of what we use each one for. Hopefully you found this super helpful. I haven't seen a video like this on YouTube, which is why I felt like doing it. If you found it helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. Otherwise, we'll talk to you guys next time.